that is very close to my heart and I know close to most people's heart as well. And um, I just thought it was something that's needed. It's something that I work with a lot, helping, assisting animals and their humans to know when it is the right time to let them go and how to make it all a little more peaceful and joyful for everyone. Um, so I don't know if um, Janine might have explained to you as well, just before we start, that um, I am planning on doing one of my meditations that I uh, do in my introduction workshops. And that is a meditation where you actually go and meet your animal friend that has passed. And it can be quite an emotional, obviously, it can be very joyful, but very emotional meeting. So I would advise you to have some tissues ready. Um, and it's also okay if you want to just listen and not actually do the meditation. You can always, if you don't feel ready to, to it, but it, um, it is a beautiful way of, um, working through a few things as well. So I just wanted to prepare you for that as well. Okay, so I think without further ado, um, we're going to start off as per usual with the meditation, um, just an opening meditation to connect us. I'm going to put my camera off. And um, so that the sound quality is better and we'll have a bit of a slideshow. So I just want to make sure before we continue, is everybody, um, can everybody hear me? I'm just seeing that someone might not be able to hear me. Okay. Gail says yes. Catherine says yes. Laura. Great. Thank you, everybody. All right, so I'm going to switch my camera off and then we're going to start a meditation with my dear sunshine helping us as well. Okay, in the meantime, just get comfortable. Okay, so just make sure you're feeling comfortable and your feet are on the ground and you can actually feel the soles of your feet against the ground. And close your eyes or just rest your eyes lightly on beautiful sunshine whose picture is in, on the screen. And take a deep breath in and slowly breathe out. And as you breathe in again, Breathe in a beautiful golden light tinged with a rose color. It's beautiful rose gold light. Breathe it in. And then as you breathe out, just expel any anxieties, any worries, anything that feels heavy. Breathe it out. And you can imagine it as a dark shadow. And as it leaves you, it gets transformed into this beautiful golden light. And then you breathe in that light again. You just take a few breaths like that. And while you're doing that, also take your focus down to your heart space. And feel that immense love that you have for all animals and for nature, for all beings on this planet. And then extend that love out. You can almost visualize a thread of light, a thread of love, actually, moving from your heart space, connecting you to the animals around you, perhaps the animals in the room with you, the animals and all the beings outside, and not just the animal beings, but the insects and the plants the rocks, the minerals, and of course, including that is the human beings. Feel the wonderful connection that you have with the others on this call, and even the others that will be listening to this call at a later stage. 
energy transcends time and space. So just include everyone who is walking this path with us for the good of the planet, for the good of ourselves, for the good of the earth and the universe. Still keeping your focus on your heart, I want you to breathe in that immense love that nature and all her beings have for you. Know that it's not a one-sided affair, this. It's a beautiful relationship of pure, unconditional love that is giving and receiving. We are all part of each other. We are all connected in this beautiful way. And feel that oneness, that wholeness, and that security of being part of this immense universe. Feel safe and protected in this light and in this love. And let's invite other beings, other star beings in this universe to be with us on this call. Perhaps animal friends or human friends that are in another realm, in the star realms, the heavenly realms. And just feel safe within this beautiful cocoon of light, cocoon of love. Knowing that any negativity will be transformed into light and love. And all for the highest, highest good of all. Take your focus back to your heart space. Take a deep breath in. Slowly breathe out, and when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Okay. All right, I really want to thank Sunshine for being with us, because I know she's... Um, right here with us. She's one of my greatest teachers. And she passed in October last year. And she's proven to everyone, certainly on the um, correspondence course, that she is still very much in teaching mode, just from the other side. Um, and I actually felt really emotional putting this presentation together today and just preparing for this talk tonight and understandably so because I think um, it's been I've, there's been quite a few humans and animals that have passed on in the last sort of eight months and it, it really just um, deepens sometimes the connection that we have with I want to say with spirit but everything is energy and spirit and just it just creates more of an understanding sometimes if we can if we can work with the knowledge that the energy, the essence, the soul of the animal or the person that leaves their physical body behind is still there and still doing things that they are meant to be doing. We just can't see them. and But we are able to connect with them. And that's part of what we're going to be talking about tonight. Another part is about preparing for that physical loss of having to let them go and helping you as the human who loves the animal so much to do so with absolute unconditional love and respect for the being that's brought so much into your life, but also for the animal to be able to go with ease and not having to worry about their humans and because that is a, a very big part of this work is or not of this work of this life is animals not wanting to go until their humans are ready for them to go and that's something that I find so often when I'm working 
with animals that are transitioning into the other realms, animals that are preparing to leave their physical bodies. So I've just written a few key points here that I want to talk to. Um, for those of you who are familiar with um, animal communication, you'll understand what I'm saying quite easily. For those of you that it is um, quite new with, I'd, I've got a guide on my website, Animal Talk Africa, that you can download. It's a free guide, just a simple guide to how to send and receive messages to the animals, which explains about the unconditional love um, that is the love that connects and through which we communicate. So I'd encourage you to do that. Um, I think you just have to sign up for my newsletter to be able to get that free guide. So one of the things that if you know that your animal friend is on her last journey um, in this physical world and, you know, if they've been diagnosed with something terminal, if they're just really, really old and you can see that they're slowing down and that question comes up, that question comes up, do I, will she go by herself or him? Will he or her go by themselves? Will they be? Do they need my help? Do they need the vet to help them to leave their their body? No matter what that question at the time, what I think is most important is to really connect with your animal friend by sending that unconditional love, which is how we always know that connection is. Feel right into your heart space and spend some really quiet heart time with your animal friend and without worrying, I know it sounds strange, but without thinking in your head all the time, oh, you know, are you okay? Are you suffering? Are you just be in that space with them? That beautiful sort of heart breathing space. It is a beautiful thing to do. If you um, look at some of the past webinars on this, um, on Big Marker with Sophia, she, go, she talks a lot about heart breathing, and there is one specifically on that subject. If you can be with your animal and just be in that heart space, even if it's just for a, an hour or even less, just completely focused time. And that often brings a lot of clarity on what's going on and whether you need to call the vet or whether you can let them go. Let them know that you love them unconditionally. And also let them know that it is okay for them to leave you in this physical realm. Because, and that you understand that it's not the end, that you understand that they will be with you afterwards, just not in the same way. I've had so many experiences with um, animals and when they, and I don't work with animals in spirit a lot unless I have known them in life and I've helped them transition. Then often I'll get a message from them on in the spirit world that shows me unequivocally and shows their humans that they are still there. They are still aware of what's going on with them in their physical world. I've had um, one specific example that always sticks in my mind was a, uh, Burbo, which is a, a South African, very big dog that was, he was bred for, um, or the breed is for actually originates as defending sheep against lions. So very big, very, um, I don't want to say aggressive, but very protective animals. And this dog in particular, it was a very, very difficult decision that the person had to make. He had suddenly, as he turned two years old, he'd suddenly become very, very violent. And he was living with a woman who was a child psychologist and she ran her practice from home. So she was having children coming in and out of her home daily. And he grew up with these kids. A lot of them were regulars and they played with them. And, you know, he was to all intents, the most wonderful 
happy dog, um, playful, careful with children. And then the moment he turned two years old, it was like something switched in his head and he started, he actually bit one of the kids. And of course, what do you do? It was, you know, and then suddenly he went into this mode where there was just, when I communicated with him, it was, he didn't actually know what had happened. It was like there was something in him that he actually could not control. Now this would, that's another subject all, you know, all together, but the decision had to be taken. Do you rehome this animal that has this, this issue, which perhaps is never going to go away, and then you just pass the problem on to someone else? Or do you have the strength to actually let him go out of his body, even though he's such a young, beautiful dog? So that decision was made, and it was a, it was the most difficult decision, obviously. But they did. They, they had him euthanized. And very respectfully, very gently, and it was obviously very hard, but also very beautiful. And the day after, I just sent my mind his way and checked in, and I got this clear, clear message saying, thank you for the white roses. And I didn't know this, but they had planted a white rose bush where they'd buried his body. And, you know, that was in itself just confirmation for them that that he was okay and that he was there with them still. So, you know, even though it is such a huge thing to lose the physical presence, there is that knowledge that there is something there, something of them is with you in your heart at all times. So... That was, that's not a, a common decision that has to be taken. But some of the more common decisions that have to be taken for euthanasia is um, when they are very ill and suffering. And do you just let them suffer and die in their own time? Or do you help them pass out of their body? And for me... I've, you know, I've, you can think about it logically, but also just feeling into it. We, gone are the days, I remember when I was very young, people would talk about the animals just going off into the bottom of the garden and when they were ready and just, just lying down and curling up and dying. And I think with medicine and the progress of, of, you know, the different foods and the high quality stuff and, the way we keep our animals, they're living so much longer these days and, and quality lives as well. I mean, um, Sunshine was 19 when she died. Um, I think the youngest cat I've ever had that um, has died in my life is is been 16. And then when I was growing up, you know, our cats were 10, 12 was a good age, but not anymore. So what I'm you know, on a logical level, we spend, we do so much to keep them alive that sometimes it is so much, and almost 90% of the time, it's very, very difficult for them to go by themselves. You know, if they have kidney failure, if they, you know, there's um, cancer or tumors or pancreatitis or something that is really um, so severe that they're not going to recover from, but they're not going to die from easily and quickly either, then there is a decision to be made. And for me, I've always felt that the act of euthanasia as it is meant to be, an end of suffering, can be the greatest gift that you can give your animal friend. So I'll quickly go through some of these, you know, ask them to show you a sign. Um, when they're at that stage, there is a time when you can be confused. You don't know how long they are suffering. You know, you don't know if they are suffering enough and they want to go. 
you don't know if you want to keep them with you longer can be very confusing and very emotional. So sometimes you can ask them to show you a sign and that could be when they just absolutely suddenly stop eating or just don't get out of their bed or don't get, you know, they, when their limbs collapse. But one of the signs that I look for on the physical is when the light goes out of their eyes and they I must admit that is um, something that I've noticed that I can, and I can even see from a photograph when an animal is ready to go, if I'm working with a distant consultation. And there is a very low energy, life energy force. And that often is, is seen in the eyes. And I think that is probably the best way to tell when it is ready, if you need to make that decision. Okay, and then just a few more things. It's really important to acknowledge the grief and the difficulty of this time, because although death is a transition and we know that the energy body, their essence is still with us, and this is true with, with both animals and human, it is still a great physical loss. And, you know, some there is that, that poem that goes, death is nothing at all. On some level it is, but on another level, it is really something to be acknowledged with the greater, greatest respect that this is a life that is changing, that this is a body that is being let go. It is something that is a very, very big thing. And I know in the past, and I think it's from experience and growth, you know, as a, as a person and just doing this work, I've wanted to say, I've always wanted to say, oh, but you know, it's only the body that's going. And yes, it is only the body, but that, what a beautiful body and what a wonderful body to have around you. So you miss that body. So it's okay to really grieve and to feel that grief. And, you know, sometimes people feel grieve more for their animal friends that pass than they do for humans and for family members. And that's okay as well. You know, we develop such a strong bond with our animals because of that absolute unconditional love that they offer us. Which we don't really, we don't often get from humans. You know, there's a very rare human love that is unconditional. And you know, I'm fortunate to have found it in in a number of humans, and but as a child, I always found it with my animals. You know, so it's really understandable that we allow yourself to grieve, allow yourself to grieve over the passing. And but in the same way, don't make the last days or weeks or months with that animal something that is so full of sadness because you know that they're going so live in the moment be with them in their beautiful body be with them even if they're sleeping all the time because they're so old they can't you know even if they can't go for long walks anymore even if you know they're not eating a huge amount and you're worrying about their weight i mean i've, I've known a lot of old animals so that's what i'm talking to but really there's those little moments of joy that that you need to embrace or just embrace, not you need to, but just embrace them and be with them in that moment. And because what I've also noticed, if we are very sad and depressed when the animals are leaving, it makes it, and sometimes it makes it more difficult for them to go because they are even more concerned about us. And that, you know, one of the, one of my early um, experiences with helping an, an animal to leave, and I'm going to actually use this slide with the, the butterflies. It was when um, there was a cat that had cancer and I was working with her from a distance. I hadn't ever met her. And her human contacted me when she was um, in hospital on a drip. And 
she'd been through chemotherapy. She'd been through so much treatment to prolong her life. And her human really did not want her to go. Obviously, we don't want our animals to go. But she was really battling to let her go. And I worked with her and I worked with a cat. And one of the questions that I got from the cat or the statements that I got from this cat, she loved her human so much. She said to me, I'm too worried about her to to just go by myself. I'm just really too worried. I'm not going to go by myself. So what I did that night is I just worked with her and worked with my guides and worked with her guides and reassured her that I would be there to help her human through this time, that she would not be alone and that she does understand that she's able to let her go. And her human was accepting at that stage. And that night, even though she was on the drip at the vet, she passed by herself at the vet. And what she showed me, and I didn't know, obviously, until the morning um, that she had gone. But during the night, when I was connecting with her, she showed me these beautiful yellow butterflies rising up from her body. And to me, butterflies have always, and fields of yellow flowers, that's why I found this picture, has always been a um, symbol for me of the other side, you know, the, the spirit realms, the heavenly realms. And when I spoke to her human about this, I said I just saw the stream of golden yellow butterflies flying up from her body and she just, you know, broke down and said, well, that's my sign for spirit, yellow butterflies. So even though it was my sign also for spirit, this cat had shown me something that really, really meant a lot to her human to know that she was at peace. And the time that I had seen this was the time that um, she had passed. There's also recently I had a, I'm going to tell you stories because that's probably the best way is just to use examples of how this, how this can be. Recently I had um, a friend of mine who's also done quite a bit of animal communication work herself, studying herself. And she asked me, to advise her about her little dog who was nearing the end. She had big cancerous growths. And she, to look at her on a physical, purely physical level, it, you wondered how she could still be alive because she, you know, it was it was really unpleasant. She had big protruding growths, growths and there was a bad smell and but the moment I connected with her, there was this absolute joy and life energy still bubbling over, which is completely incongruous with the physical state of her. So, you know, a vet or, you know, people who would just have a look at her and not sense that beautiful life energy in her would say, well, what are you doing? It's cruel to keep her alive in that state. But she was eating still. She was walking around the garden in a very blissful sort of state. What she told me was that she was so, she was rescued. Um, she was a rescue little dog and she'd had great suffering in her life before she came to my friend. And she just loved being able to be in that loving space with the children that were in the family, with the, uh, they live on a small holding on a farm that she was able to walk and just be really in this beautiful, secure, happy space. She loved it so much. And she wanted to thank her human for being there for her, for giving her this absolute unconditional love. And once, you know, I, I just felt, and uh, my friend had said to her, you know, give me a sign if you, you know, when you stop eating, perhaps that could be a sign. And she got back from the little dog that she would never stop eating because she just loved her food so much. So of course that doesn't make um, 
the decision making any easier. So what happened after I had spoken to my friend and given her the messages? It was quite incredible. She suddenly went downhill and two days later, she, she passed away by herself. So she was in quite high spirits and then she suddenly went down and my friend was aware that, you know, she was preparing to leave and she stayed with her and she said, you know, should she call the vet now? And I said, she's ready to go. And I said, if, you know, if she hasn't gone in another couple of hours, then give the vet a call. And she slipped away very quietly and peacefully. So I was also, again, assisting in that process. So when I say assisting in an easy transition, what we can do is go into a meditative state with our animal friend or even with someone else's animal friend if, you, if you're helping someone, if you're helping an animal. And ask your guides and ask their guides to help the spirit leave by themselves. It doesn't always work, but if the circumstances are right and the animal, I don't know, if the animal is really, really, you know, in that space where they don't want to put their human through having to make the decision of the, the humans really battling with that decision, sometimes it works. I remember being called to um, a client whose little Jack Russell was also, you know, in the transitioning stages. And she was, he was so ready to go and he was curled up. I was there physically with him. He was curled up in his basket. And just, I felt this just peaceful lightness coming from him. And I said, he's absolutely ready to go. And, you know, I said, call the vet. And she was happy to do that. And the vet could only get there in about two hours time. And as she put the phone down, I had my hand on his heart and I was just praying with him and loving him and she was loving him and I think the, the other, a couple of other family members were there and he was surrounded by this beautiful love and he just floated off. I could almost see his spirit leaving his body. So that was also a really beautiful and easy transition. And it seems to happen when the person has decided, okay, I can let go now. I, you know, I want peace now. I, you know, I'm, I'm happy that you are going to be going onto this new journey and that I know that I can still connect with you. So just bear that in mind when you, when you are faced even with your, either with your own animal friend or, or when you're helping someone else. So making that decision as well, as I said, it doesn't happen very often when they'll go by themselves. Um, and sometimes, you know, people often ask me, well, can't, you know, what happens if I don't, if I just let her go? It can be a very, very horrible death. For me, um, you know, again, we all have our own personal bits coming into the communication. But um, whenever I, I've communicated with someone, with an animal that um, is ready to go, they often, often ask for help to leave their body rather than exist in a strange, um, in and out of their, their bodies, trying to go when there's so many things that are keeping them, whether it's drugs or whether it's just the need of the human. So I had to, this is a picture of my little lily pad who actually passed away in March um, and this was probably the reason why I was so emotional when I was putting this um, slideshow together. It was very, you know, she was old, she was 16 as in for a little dog. She'd had a bit of a rough start in life um, but I'd had her for 14 of those 16 years and she was a real soul companion as as they are, as they creep into your hearts. And I was leaving to go, and it was a, an emotional time for me as well. And
Hi, Winter, I think we've lost you. Am I back now? Hello. Hello. Oh, there you are. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, I heard you say uh, it was an emotional time for me as well. That okay. I heard. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll keep it brief because maybe that's why the, the microphone went off. Oh, no. So <laughs> I went on an unexpected trip to, to the UK thinking that I'd only be going uh, a week Um for a week, but I ended up being gone for three weeks. And during that time, about, you know, about a about four or five days before I was due to return back, I suddenly got very worried about Lily Pad. Um, I checked in with, with my house sitter and she said, no, she was a bit worried about her as well because she hadn't eaten that morning. So I asked her to go to the vet and uh, take her to the vet. And the vet said, no, her teeth were sore and didn't think that there was too much wrong, but deep down in my heart, I just knew that this was, I didn't want to acknowledge it even on a, on a mental level, but in my heart, I knew that this was perhaps the end. And I communicated with her and I, I very selfishly, and I know it was selfish on my part, said, please just wait until I get back. I'll, I'll be back on the Monday. And even then there was a delay because the, there was heavy snowstorms in England and we missed our connecting flight and we had to stay overnight in Germany. And so that was another delay. But I was just still just sending love to um, Lenny Pad. My house sitter was saying, no, she's okay. She's not eating a lot, but she's eating a little bit. And she didn't seem too worried. But I was still very worried. And all on the sort of 12 hour flight back, I was, you know, just communicating with her, holding her space for her, with her. And I got back home and she was, she was there still, still alive. The, um, house sitter had, had gone to work. Um, but instead of coming bouncing out to greet me like she normally did, she was just lying very, very still and she couldn't even lift her head up to see me, so to greet me. So I had to rush her to the vet. And she had, she was in a lot of pain. She'd had um, severe pancreatitis, which could have been caused by any number of things at her age. But what was interesting to me is that when the um, dog sitter had taken her to the vet, she hadn't shown the vet what was really happening. And she hadn't actually given anyone else a sign that she was in such a bad state. It was only when I came back and saw her that I knew that this was it. And it was a very, very quick decision that I had to make um, at the vets. And the vet said, we could put her on a trip, but she's in a lot of pain and she's not going to recover. She's very old. You know, all the logical things. And I looked you know, I was there with my husband and with my um, stepson, Ben, and who we all loved, you know, Lily loved us all and we loved Lily. And and she, she sat up and she looked into the eyes of each and every one of us. And, you know, deep into that, it was like a really long, I love you, goodbye. I love you, goodbye. I love you, goodbye. And... Then, you know, we did, we had to let her go and it was quite peaceful in the end. But that was, you know, that was quite a shocking thing. You know, I've had, I've had to make decisions um, when I've known it's been coming for months and months and months. And then the day comes and I wake up and I look at the animal and I say, okay, today's the day and I know it is. And then the vet comes and it's a very beautiful, peaceful transition when they leave their bodies and there's such a relief and a release so there's very you know the, none of this is ever easy but they can tell us and as long as we are really stay in our hearts and not our heads we can listen to them and we'll know you will know 
when the time is right. So I hope that all makes sense. One of the things I also wanted to share with you um, is when you are, you know, waiting for the vet to come or if you feel that your animal friend is going, do a bit of a ceremonial, peaceful thing for them and for you. So light a candle. I always find it very helpful also to um, light some frankincense, to so burn some frankincense, which is traditionally used to open the gates of heaven. And, you know, it is um, used in the church as well as a purifying and cleansing um, energy clearer. So that's just a couple of tips for you as well. Okay, so is everybody ready to do this meditation now? I'm going to lead you into it. And really just listen if you feel it's going to be um, going too deep for you. But... Let's just see what happens. I've got also some beautiful music that was written specifically for my meditations by a dear friend of mine, Chris Tokalon, who is also in the spirit realms now. He passed away in um, September, October last year. So it fe felt quite um, poignant to have his music with his meditation as well. So if everyone's happy and everyone can hear me well. I'm going to just put the music on and then I'll talk over the music and just listen to my voice and don't try and go anywhere or don't have any expectations. Just let whatever happens happen. Let whoever comes come. You're in a very safe space here. Okay, so just sit comfortably and close your eyes, quieten your mind, and slowly take yourself to a beautiful, peaceful place in nature. Ask your guides to be with you at this time, your angels, your animal spirit guides, whoever you feel comfortable and safe with. In the distance, you see a beautiful golden light, and I want you to move towards that light and step into it. Feel the peace and protection you have here. Ask your guides to be with you on this journey and thank them for being with you. And you can ask for guidance to this special place. You are now moving through a dense forest. It is a quiet and peaceful place, a place full of magic. The ground is soft beneath your feet. The air is warm and full of forest smells. Other animals may come and be with you to give you their love and warmth. In the distance, you see the most beautiful colored light streaming through the trees. As you move towards the light, the trees start thinning out and you emerge from the forest into a gentle meadow. The light is shining onto you and flowing over you. Now step again into this light. You are suddenly transported into a world of light. A world so full of love and peace that takes your breath away. Stay there for a while, drinking in the light and love which surrounds you. And then start moving forwards into this world. And as you move, you start seeing things which are familiar to you. 
You know this place. You've been here before. Now look up and see who is before you. This is the one who you thought had gone from you forever. As you move towards him or her, they move towards you. You meet and embrace with the warmth you'd almost forgotten. Feel that love flowing between you. Feel the warmth and the joy of being together again. They are young again, healthy. There's no pain, there's no sorrow, only lively joy. They are here as whole and as happy as ever. I spend a bit of time here now and you can say everything you want to say. Know that they understand and will listen. This is no place for guilt, no place for sorrow. Only joy and happiness exist here. Once you have finished saying what you need, be still and listen. Just be in the space and listen for any messages your friend has for you. Listen with your heart. Listen with your soul. Spend this time just being with your animal friend. Feel the softness of their body beneath your hand. Play together and run together. Play the games you used to play. Just enjoy being together again. Others may join you, possibly family and friends who have crossed over into this light. Listen to them. They have come to tell you that they are with you always, and this world of light is part of your world. The veil is thin. There is nothing that needs to separate you. It is as easily accessible as stepping through a doorway, and you can be with them at any time. Know, too, that the one who met you is with you. That they come to visit you from this place as often as they want and are so pleased that now you have found your way here. Know that whenever you need to be, you can be here in an instant. All it takes is a thought. Now spend a little bit more time here with your loved ones. Feel their warmth and love. Take heed of their messages. And know that they are with you forever and always. The one who met you stays with you as you walk back towards the light through which you came. You are led by your guides back through the forest.
And your friend goes with you for some of the way to show you that he or she is always with you. And you are left with that knowledge, the knowledge that your spirits are together for eternity. So move back through the forest with your guides. Smell the foresty smells. Listen to the music of the birds. And soon you come to the place where you started off your journey. The animals are with you, acknowledging you, thanking you for letting yourself back into nature as always. So move through the light which brings you back to your physical body. Become aware of your breath. Just become aware of the sounds of the room around you. You can gently move your toes and move your fingers. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Okay, I'll just give you a few seconds to come fully back into your body. Now, this is a meditation that you can do at any time. You know, you can always come back to the recording as well and listen to it like you have today. Or you can, it is on my meditation CD, which is downloadable as well. Um, from my website but give yourself time and just know that you can be with them one of the reasons why I wrote this meditation is that I found whenever people were talking about their animals and their animals that have passed there was always this absolute guilt and no matter what the circumstances, whether they died of old, old age and it was a peaceful death or whether they had a horrific accident or whether they got really sick from cancer, there's always this feeling that we have, and I, I include myself in this often, and which I have to work through at the time, of could I have done more? You know, why didn't I see? Why didn't I pick it up earlier? What, you know? What else could I have done to make her life better or his life better? So there's always the sense of guilt around death of our animal friends. And that, you know, that was the main reason why I wrote this meditation was so that people could meet their friend in their spirit body and address those guilts, you know, address those feelings of, oh, I'm sorry, I, you know, I didn't do this, or I'm sorry, I... I wasn't there, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And never once in any communication that I've done with animals that have passed over has there ever been blame on their human for their death. I can categorically say that. There's never once been any blame laid. And no matter what, I always feel that the animals, when they pass, it is for a reason. And whether it's just because it's the end of their time on earth, you know, and they, you know, sort of as in human years, three score and 10, but, um, or if it was, you know, something that they needed to do on the other side, often there's more things that they need to do and they can do it better in spirit than they can in the, in the physical body. So if there's, if you have lingering feelings of, of guilt, work with this meditation or actually just just talk to your animal friend and transform that feeling of guilt into that joy that absolute beautiful wonderful joy that we have when we are in the presence of our animal friends and you can feel that joy even when you're connecting with their spirit so i hope that 
that really helps helps you um, at this time. Um, I'm just thinking if there's anything else I wanted to touch on before we go to questions. And no, it's gone from my mind, so I think I probably have covered everything that I that I wanted to cover or, or I was meant to cover um, during this call. So if you do have any questions, um, we've still got some time. You know, I've, I've, I know this is this webinar is probably going to be longer than the normal hour that I have for my webinars, so um, we can run over. So I think, um, Janine, if you want to turn the Q&A on, then people can, can write their questions and then I can answer them. Yeah, it's yeah. turned on. Um, oh, it is? Okay. Oh, no, it's okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, sorry. Okay, great. Okay, so if anybody wants to ask a question or even just share an experience, which is not too long a story, we can please share. We even, if, even if you want to let me know how that meditation was for you, how did it feel? Okay, Marguerite. Marguerite is asking about when we really don't know. Um, Marguerite, you say everyone said you'll know, you'll know, but you feel that you didn't know. And can I ask what was the the consequences of that? I suppose, you know, what what were the circumstances? Did you have to euthanize? Were you told you had to, or did they? Did the animal, your animal friend, pass by himself or herself? Okay. Marguerite, while you're answering that, there's a couple of more questions. I'll get back to you. Uh, okay, so you took the advice, obviously, of a vet saying that you should, and then you did, and you just you still don't really know if it was the right thing. This is the time, Marguerite, when you start going into meditation and going into feeling into um, you know into that situation, feeling connecting with your animal and spirit. So work with that meditation. Um, and see, you know, see what comes, really see what comes. Um, and if you, you know, if you want to consult with the help of a professional animal communicator, that's also okay to do that. Maybe some beautiful messages would come through um, because it's easier often to communicate with, with animals that we are not so close to. So if you want someone else to help, you know, there's a list of professional communicators um, on my website that I really, really trust and would refer people to. So maybe that's that's how you can start getting closure around that. Okay. All right. Have any animals that have passed ever expressed a wish to you on what to do with their physical bodies after they've transitioned? Um, this is quite interesting. Normally, I just say to the client, they must do what feels right for them. Um, and, you know, one of the experiences I had with my own cat, um, Sunshine, was it came to me so strongly that um, she needed to be buried, have her physical body bur buried um, at the house um, where we are now, even though 
I know that we're going to be selling and moving from this house, um, you know, poss possibly in less than a year's time. And I was reluctant to, you know, just on the human physical side to leave her body here. But I got such a strong message from her that she needed to be here in order to um, sort of help balance the energies of the land. And that I have followed. And it really was, I know it was the right decision. Whereas, you know, other animals of mine I've had cremated and put in a special place that they loved or that I loved. So it really is about um, the sense of what is right for you. But sometimes there is a... Um, a bigger purpose on their burial, so to speak, or what to do with their, their remains. Um, Karen, about the other animals in the household, are they understanding of their friends crossing over? What can we do for them? Karen, yes, absolutely. We can just tell them, um, you know, in my experience, they always know um, that, you know, when it's, when it is the end and if they, you know, but, but tell them anyway. And, and often there's a shift in um, sort of hierarchies and positions. And sometimes um, the spirit of the animal that has left will start overlighting one of the others and they'll start doing things that um, the one that left had, had done, but definitely communicate to them what is going on. It's, it's important. Okay. Um, Aldine, it was so comforting and enlightening. Thank you. I had a similar experience with the Bourbon with the rescue border collie of 10 years. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing that, Aldine. Um, you consulted a communicator who helped you come to that decision. Thank you. And Shelley's asking, can you speak about when an animal has passed, but in spirit they visit through another pet or animal who is alive? Uh, yes, Shelley. Um, I just touched on that briefly, answering that other uh, question about how they can overlight other animals um, and bring us messages um, through the other animals, which is um, quite interesting. Uh, and also, I, I knew this question was coming, and you've just said it. Also, could you speak about when the animal has reincarnated and you have a feeling they have come back to you? Absolutely. I've I've seen that many, many times, both with my own animals and um, with clients that I've helped. And um, one in particular I always remember was a, a German shepherd that I worked with. He was incredibly protective of his human who was a single living, you know, single woman living by herself on a very remote sort of farm, small holding in quite a dangerous area in, in South Africa. And he had saved her life a number of times. And he said to me in the communication that um, he kept on showing me this cat, a Siamese cat. And she said to me, the woman, oh, gosh, I um Yes, I always think he reminds me of a Siamese cat that I used to have. It's almost like he's come back in a in a dog body. And this dog confirmed that and said, yes, because I can protect you better in this body. So that was, you know, that was quite a lovely um, reincarnation story as well. Um, so definitely, they don't always come back. You know, a lot of people whose animals have passed asked me, Oh, when are, when are they going to come back? And what are they going to look like when they come back? How will I know? How will I find them? And, you know, that is a, um, that's quite a um, difficult question for me to answer and even for the animal to answer sometimes because sometimes they're just enjoying the freedom of being out of their physical body. And there's, it's normally the human need. Um, for the animal to come back and be and be with them than the animals need. So if they do, it's really when it is the right thing. And there's not a case of having to look for the animal, the new animal in the new body. They will just arrive and you will know. So I know that sounds um, a bit trite perhaps, but believe me, they, they make the plan. You don't have to actually um, – you can be sensitive to it, but you don't have to be on the lookout. To it. 
all the time. So I hope that answers you, Shani. Um, uh, Gail, um, my aerial dog came up into bed and leaned on my heart to cuddle the morning she chose to pass. I didn't know she'd pass that evening as she was ill but still active. And yet she gave me her hello that evening to check on her. And I found her still alive but going and I got to hold her sweetly the last 10 minutes of her life. So that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that, Gail. Um, and yes, they do. They they often know when they're going to go by themselves and they'll give us that last little cuddle and that last special moment. So, you know, that is a beautiful thing to do. Okay. Okay, Gail, we have a um, graveyard in our backyard and do a ceremony. Sorry, do a ceremony for each dog, putting special items in the grave with them. Um, so we put a gravestone on top of the tagline under their names, remind us of the quality of them. That's beautiful as well. It's a lovely, lovely to do a ceremony and something in honor of their bodies as well. Okay. Thank you, Marguerite. I got that message. Um, do we have any idea of what their experience of passing actually is? Well, you know, to me, it's always been a really peaceful, beautiful feeling of release. You know, and that, um, that's always what I've been shown. And there is no fear. There's just a, a beautiful joy um, and bliss when they've gone. Um, so that's all I can um, express about that. And um, my only my experience of when I've communicated with them while they are passing. So I hope that helps. Okay. Thanks, Paula, for that, saying that the meditation and music were beautiful. Thank you. Okay, Khalil, when a vet gives the advice that it's time to euthanize, then it is they who are bringing us to that point, medically, not we ourselves, spiritually or emotionally. Do we take the advice or wait until we know between us and our animal companion? Well, you know, vets don't always get it right. They, you know, they're also human and, and a lot of them, you know, are, actually, as you say, they are looking just at the medical, physical signs. Um, so I have had experiences where, you know, the vets have said, you know, it's not fair to keep the animal alive. And the animal is saying, I can carry on for a little while longer, you know, and they are determined. Sometimes they are really, really determined to stay. So you can take that advice, but wait a while to act on it. You know, when I, when I was talking about my um, having to go that very quick decision with Lily, Yes, it was the vet's advice that, you know, actually put me on the spot. But I knew she was right. And I really, it was difficult because I know that it was very quick for Lily as well to not what she could see my distress. So that made it difficult for her to leave easily. But once, you know, we spent just 10, 15 minutes with her just doing, being in that heart space. And then we were both ready and it was quite peaceful. Um, but so I think, yes, just, you know, make sure that you have that connection first before you take that decision, no matter what advice you get from who. It's, it's such a personal thing with you, you and the animal. Okay. Um. Cheryl and an animals that pass in an accident, do they have a price sense that this is their time and can they choose it? Um, I believe in some some instances, yes. Um, obviously, I don't know everything because, you know, I think we only know everything once we're on the other side ourselves. And maybe then we don't even know everything. We just have a glimpse of what's possible. But, um, yes, you know, often, often I think they do. You know, they, I have had um, – experiences of clients sort of thinking well you know they'd they'd acted the the dog or cat had done something unusual um the morning before an accident you know so i think there is that sense um there is that sense that 
that they do know and perhaps that they can choose as well. Okay, Laura, um, thank you for this. Um, you said you asked for my advice during the previous webinar when your beautiful cat was passing. You were feeling a lot of guilt, but I told you just to love her and let her know that it was okay for her to go. I did, and actually she passed away not long after that. You had the chance to really be with her, and that was priceless. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that, Laura. I'm really pleased that I could help with that and that you actually did that and managed to find peace. Thank you. Gail, um, you've seen with the mind's eye a huge beam of light stretching to the heavens out of the dog's body and the dog getting on a boat in the middle of a peaceful river sailing away but turning to wag and say goodbye. Very beautiful picture in my mind as a dog passed by vet with family around. Yes, that is that is such a lovely image, Gail. Um, I had something similar with my dog Baxter who um, – he had a, uh, he'd eaten something. Oh, yeah, it was also a, quite a, a nasty, um, unexpected shock. And the vet had sent him home thinking that he would be fine. Um, and then he took a bad turn in the night. And I was just lying with him. And what was interesting to me, I kept on getting this image of him. His, he was still breathing. His breathing had changed. But it was almost like he was in a coma. And I kept on seeing this this body bounding through the, the fields, this really young, happy dog, you know, and my logical mind was saying, okay, no, you know, he's going to be okay. He's going to be okay wanting that. But then he passed about 10 minutes after I'd got that image and he'd already left his body and he was already shining, chasing through those fields of yellow flowers. Um, so that was a comfort for me as well. Thank you for that reminder, Gail. Okay, Shelley, do you think we can assist others in the same way as if they have died but have lost their animals by being stolen or gone missing when there hasn't been resolution, thinking the emotional aspect of letting go? Uh, Shelley, yes, I think um, I think letting go of the emotional aspect is very, very important. And, you know, it's something that I talk about when I work with when I speak about um, working with missing animals, um, and it is about letting letting go the desperation and the need um, to have that animal back, and that often brings the animal back. Um, and I've actually, you know, I had that experience with Biggles, who I wrote my book about, Where is Biggles, about helping people to find their missing animals. And that is a huge key, um, is to helping with the emotional letting go. Um, and sort of handing over, trusting the animal and trusting the universe and trusting God in whatever form you may feel he or she is. Um, to, you know, that the, whatever is happening is for the highest good of all. So thank you that, for that, Shelley, an important point you're making. Okay, and Janine, your beautiful Kaiser, um, just in the 48 hours before Kaiser passed, you burned frankincense incense, which helped both of you be in the present moment together. Another thing that really helped was letting people who are most closest to what was happening, to know what was happening and their thoughts and love surrounded both of us and supported both of us also. Of course, yes. Um, it is wonderful to have the support of loved ones and, you know, the ones that loved um, Kaiser as well. So that really, um, that really does help. So, you know, don't be, um, don't be shy to let people know what's going on because, you know, especially people that you are close to and that support can be invaluable. So thank you for that, Janine. That's wonderful. Okay. And I think that's perfect timing because that's the last question. And those were really good, important questions, so thank you for that. All right. So what I'd like to do, we can just end off with a closing meditation. Um, but this is a picture of dear Mandla, my great white lion elder who passed, I think, nearly about two years ago now. 
um, at the great old age of 19, which is very old for a, for a wild lion who had spent more than half his life in the wild. And let's just gaze upon his wisdom while I lead us out in closing and do a bit of grounding here as well. All right, so again, take your focus down to your feet and feel them really connected to the ground, to the floor, the ground beneath you. Close your eyes or just gaze softly into Mandela's eyes. And take a deep breath in, slowly breathe out. And feel a beautiful golden beam of light connecting you, coming down from the heavens, passing through your body, entering your head, your crown chakra, moving through the center of your body. Feel it flowing down your legs into your feet and down into the ground below you. Feel that connection that you have with this earth, with this planet, with your home in this lifetime, in this physical body. Feel the earth's energy rising up from the center through that beam of light, through your body, filling every cell of your body. Feel that vibration of life energy as it moves through your body. Embrace that life energy. And feel that life energy of all the other beings around you, the animals in your physical presence, the birds, the trees, the insects. Feel the vibrations of life on earth. And feel that beam of light connecting you to the heavens as well. And all that life energy that's out there, albeit in a different form. Let's take your focus onto your breath. Thank your guides and all your animal friends for being with you at this time. Feel their warmth and love. Feel that joy flowing through you. The joy of knowing these beings, of spending such precious time with them in the physical knowing that you can spend more precious time with them whenever you need to. And let that knowledge just filter into the cells of your body, settle beautifully and peacefully. And just breathe that in. Again, take your focus down to your feet and really feel the solid ground beneath you. You can even stamp your feet a little bit. Just become aware of your body. You can rub your fingers together, rub your hands together. Shrug your shoulders. And really feel this wonderful body that we have been given to travel in on this journey on, the, on earth in this time. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Okay. So thank you, everybody. I hope that was helpful. And um, yes, know that you can do that meditation at every any time on this webinar, as I said, or you can download um, my meditation CD, which has this meditation and a few others as well from my website if you don't already have it. 
Okay, so thank you very much, most of most of you, and I recognise your names, but there are a few new people here that I that I don't recognise. So thank you, everyone, and I'll no doubt see you again, um, if not in purpose, it, if not in person, in sort of cyber cyberspace. Thank you, Janine, for the wonderful support that you always give everybody, not just on these webinars, but um, throughout. So thank you. It's always my pleasure. Okay. And thank you for a wonderful, helpful, supportive webinar tonight. Okay. <laughs> wonderful. Thank you, Janine. Okay, so I'm going to get, get on with my evening. And I'm sure some of you are going to be getting on with your day. I think it's morning and for some of you. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone, and see you soon. Good night and goodbye. Sending lots of love. Lots of love to you. Bye. Bye. Okay. Well, thank you all for joining tonight. It was a very special webinar for all of us. We've all had to go through this at some point or other. Um, I just wanted to say if you haven't already subscribed to the Big Market channel, Winter's planning to do uh, regular uh, webinars uh, on topics like this one. So uh, if, you're, if you are uh, subscribed, then we do send out invites to all the subscribers, so you'll see those there. Um, and uh, the next webinars that are coming up, uh, next Monday evening, um, Sophia and I are doing a webinar together. Well, in fact, I'm interviewing her. She's going to share her some of her experiences that she's had in her life regarding fear or around fear and how she's overcome them. Um, because a lot of people who uh, are doing the Animal Talk Africa Online Academy face fear when they're getting to the point of receiving communications from the animals. And one of the ways, um, well, Sophia has learned through her life some of the ways of uh, coping and moving through fear. Um, she's had yeah, quite an amazing life. So, uh, that's going to be next Monday. And, yeah, she's going to share a couple of modalities with you that you can take away and do those yourself uh, at, other, at other time. And Winter has another webinar in uh, the, towards the end of July, Negotiations with the Wild. Um, but as I said, if you subscribe, then you'll get in, uh, invites to those, uh, to the upcoming webinars. So... Lovely to see you all here. <laughs> yes, so then we will see you as winter said. <laughs> see you in cyberspace again. I'm wishing you all a lovely evening or afternoon. And um, see you next time. Bye for now. Lots of love and blessings. <laughs>